that's a tater right there. That is a tater, if there's ever been one. I hadn't had the best of luck growing red taters the last few years, but we've always grown that red Pontiac that you get at feed and seed store. And I believe that red Norland that we grew this year is a better red tater variety than that Pontiac is. Very well could be. It looks like it's gonna be the year of the tater. Everybody I've seen has made a good crop. I've got a good crop. I'm gonna dig mine tomorrow. So uh, I think it is the year of the tater. Yeah, I was thinking the other day, because that soil I was working with is far from sandy, but I ended up making a pretty dang good crop from what I can see so far. So real good year for, year for taters. And uh, if you live, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but if you live in the south and didn't grow a good crop of taters, you- You need to get with us. You need, you need to get with a program might need to get some things right with a man upstairs. Right. You got some problems. You got some problems. If you didn't grow a good tater crop in the south this year. Speaking of doing good works, I'm gonna dig mine tomorrow, as I said, and I got four long rows out there, and I got a friend named Andy Weeks, and Andy's a little down on his luck right now. He's a little, he's broke. Oh. Well, he's broke. And he, I asked, he asked if he could do anything to help me, and I said, bring you some buckets in the morning, and I'm gonna get him to help me. He's a big old boy now. I'm gonna get him to help me dig my taters and I'm gonna share my taters with Oendy cause he's down and out. Well, that's my benevolent yeah. of you. Yeah. Um, Randy could probably use his little sweat and little work. Yeah. Probably help him out right. a little bit. And I, I, I hate to see when somebody's down and broke and I'm gonna help him. And you know, he can take them taters and feed him and his family for a while with that. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's say hey to everybody. Hello, everyone, Hello. and welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show. I'm Travis. And I'm Greg. And we're super excited to have you with us tonight. Got a good show planned for you. We're going to talk about um, succession planning, crop planning as we transition or start to transition from, from spring to summer. Talk about kind of some of our planting schedules and what we do, some really exciting stuff there. Um, we're just going over what we got in the garden. You're going to get Randy to help you, and I'm going to get Abram to help. He's been asking me every day, Daddy, them taters ready? And uh, so, and it's finally dried. Now, these, I dug a row of wet ones the other day, and I usually don't like to do that. But I was out there, and I had about 30 minutes before it got dark before I could spray. And I said, I just could just it was itching on me, so I had to go get a bucket full of it. It'd be interesting to me to see which one had the best help, Andy or Abram. <laughs> I could be a toss-up there. <laughs> it might. One of them's 62, one of them's three. Yeah, that's right. Um, what else we got going on? We got I got okra starting to make. I haven't got a respectable harvest yet because it's, you know, just a few at a time. My, I noticed mine earlier out there. I'm probably going to be cutting it within a week. Yeah. Um, these puppies right here. Patty pans. If you ain't grown a patty pan, you need to do it. Just say you've grown a patty pan. Them is beautiful squashes right here. Right. So, and a lot of people, they say they don't know how to cook these things. And I, the way I like to do it, with my knife cut uh -oh. there. So a patty pan has a little more kind of Let me hold one up. nuttier flavor than a regular squash does. Let's try one. You just gonna bite into it? Mm -hmm. So the texture is a little more firm. It's a little more nuttier flavor. What would be your recommended way to cook it? So I'll cut this again. I'll cut them in little wedges and you can throw them on a hot pan or if you got one of them little pans you put on the grill, put some onions and peppers in there. But um they hold their texture a little better, but I just like cut them up in little quarters, or little wedges, put some heat on them. They do taste a little different. That's the Sunburst patty pan. Sunburst. We've also got the Bennings green tent, mm -hmm. which I just planted some. We'll talk about succession plant squash. So look, what, look what Papa got right here. Then right there is some, let everybody can see it. Okay. Let me do it like this right here. Rattlesnake. Whole bean. I'm pretty, ain't they? Well, you know, I, I'm. This is first year for me growing them. I was understanding it was going to be a flatter bean than what it is. It's not a real flat bean. 
It's more of a semi-flat. I would I would classify it as a semi-flat. It's about like a round bean to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not round, completely round, and it's not like the French round beans, and it's not completely flat. So let's go with semi-flat. Semi-flat, okay. Another thing I've noticed, too, where the bean is more exposed to sun is where you get that coloring in there, the purple color. Purple, everybody can see purple color. Purple color. The purple coloring in there, and where it's not exposed to the sun, it's more green. I just thought that was interesting. But I'm fixing, fixing to, that's a word here in the South or we're going to. I'm fixing to eat me a mess of these right here and some new taters shortly. Shortly. Within the next day or two. I, the, I like, one good thing I like about the rattlesnake beans is because they got that coloring on there, they're easier to see to pick. Mm -hmm. it, now, this is an heirloom variety. But it's pretty productive for it's an It's pretty heirloom. productive. Mine are loaded up. I've been, I've been well pleased so far. Easy to grow. They are full of blooms. They're going to make, and they'll make on and on and on until the big heat wave comes in here and stops everything. But uh, This past fall when I grew them, I had a, a two-panel row, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's about a 30-foot row. And uh, I was picking a whole of our over-shoulder picking bucket twice a week, at least a whole picking, bu picking bucket full. I can almost taste that purple in there. Yeah? Those good raw? Mm -hmm. Put those in a salad. Yep. Um, what else we got going on? Pe I'm going to tell a little story about my peppers. So it's been about a month since I transplanted my peppers. And man, the first few weeks, they just did, wasn't doing nothing. The bell peppers looked all right. They were green. But my other ones just looked kind of yellow. They just wasn't, they was just sitting there, wasn't doing nothing. And um, I took it upon myself last week. I went out there and I put me some Epsom salt and down there. I put went ahead and put me some gypsum to give some calcium preventing blossom and rot. And then I soil drenched with some of this micro boost here. And we got we'll talk about this a little bit more in our question section. So I took this in a garden sprayer and I just drizzled it right around the root base. And I tell you what, it didn't take but a few days and a little rain and they had turned the corner. That Epsom salt and that micro boost really got them going. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about this right here. There ain't nothing else out there on the market like this right here. This right here, my tomatoes are almost black. Yeah. Uh, it's some good stuff, and it's been flying off the shelf. So micro boost is the, is, is the end fad right now, I can tell you. It's the end thing. It's the end thing. Get on board. Get on board. If you garden that green, you can use some of that, and you can green it up. I guarantee you. And then uh, your corn, corn, you got silk, yeah, 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 you probably that. need to spray some spinach sad. May have already done that. Okay, <laughs> you're on top of May have already done that, it. yep. So mine's a little behind you because I planted a little later than you. My incredible corn is about waist high. Um, and we did Mine's it. ear high. Your ear high. <laughs> Fast titty high is mm, ear high. Ear high, high yep. Um, We're going to have corn here shortly. So, I'm, I'm talking about shortly. I'm excited. Honey select. I'm excited. Um, so we did a video, had a video come out earlier this week where I was talking about healing corn and fertilizing corn. And uh, go check that out. One of the questions we always get that I addressed in the video, because we, we tell everybody how good of a, this fertilizer, this Chilean nitrate works great when you side dressing corn. And in the video we show that. But a lot of times people always ask, well, how much do I put down? And if you want to see the full analysis, you have to watch the video. But basically what it is, if you've got, and I've got a thousand square feet of corn, I mm -hmm. got a 30 by 35 plot, mm -hmm. that's a thousand fifty square feet. Mm -hmm. If you've got a thousand square feet of corn, you're going to use a whole 10 pound bag when you side dress. Mm -hmm. And... If you want to see how I got to that number, you'll have to go watch the video. But for a thousand square feet, this 10 pound bag is going to be just right for You've you. You've been paying attention to what I've been teaching you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Before we get into our main topic there, um, we had a disgruntled viewer last week. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, they go by the YouTube name Careless Whispers. I yeah. guess they didn't want to put their real name up there. And they said, uh, I'll quote them. They said, uh, going on and on munching is just plain annoying to watch. Also, it shows you being distracted and not focusing. 
All in all, it makes for a third-rate video. Please avoid it. Mm -hmm. What were they talking about? That lemon cucumber? Yeah, they were talking about mm. eating on the show. They didn't really care much for it. Well, now, I'll be honest with you. I did get a little carried away. Yeah. I got mesmerized a little bit with that cucumber. I was hungry, and it was good to me. And I got into it probably a little more than I should. So I, I will stand here and say that uh, I probably shouldn't have ate the whole thing during the whole show. Yeah. Well, that's mighty apologetic of Well, you. I mean, I did. I got carried away, and I got in the moment, and I got dazed. If you look back and look at it, my eyes was closed over a little bit. And I really got into that cucumber, and I should have been paying more attention to what was going on. Yeah. And I'm going to try to do better with that. Now, that being said, let's move on. Let's no. move on from that. Let's not talk about that no more. Let's just move on. So you're going to not, not eat on the show I'm going to do better. I'm going to not get carried away like that and eating again. I, he's right. I shouldn't have done that. And I'm going to let's just... Let's go on. I'm on. Okay. I got his point. I'm gonna move, move, move on past okay. it. Well, I think he done unsubscribed. Uh oh. Yeah. He said he was unsubscribing. So I, I told him not let the door hit him on the way Paul out. Oh, Trav, you shouldn't have done that. Anyway. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he'll give us one more chance. Yep. We didn't eat that much on today's show. Maybe. No, he'll... no. I'm, I'm still hungry, but I, that, I'm telling you that cucumber it, with that cavernous on there, that was some good stuff. Okay. All right, so let's get into uh, our main segment this week. So we've had a lot of people asking us, and uh, this is might vary. This discussion might vary a little bit from where you're located, but the, you can still kind of follow the same schedule. I've had a lot of people asking, I'm digging my taters. I got my onions pulled. What can I plant next? Yeah, uh, I've had several people. I've had some people come by here who want to talk about that, and that's like, Good topic for us to cover today because we in the past have always just planted that spring crop and when it was over with, we just walked away from it. And that ain't the way to garden. No, because you, your garden gets out of hand on you. You let that weed seed bank, weed seed bank get uh, up too high and, and you really need to take care of your garden better and also make it more productive. Sure. So we want to talk about succession planting, crop planting, stuff like that. Before we get into kind of this season of succession planning, I want to kind of give an insight as to what I do in the fall and winter. So we're all about crop rotation here. We try not to plant something in the same spot twice. Uh, and in doing that, a lot of people think, well, it's hard to rotate because I don't have enough garden. Um, you know, you need, excuse me, a bunch of these several subplots to be able to accurately rotate. Well, that's not always the case. And to give you a little insight on my fall rotation, my fall oh. winter rotation. So the three main crops I grow in the fall and winter. Now I grow other stuff, carrots, some other stuff, but the three main ones that I boom, 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 hammer out are lettuce, beets, and brassicas. When I say brassicas here, I'm talking about a short, a quick growing brassica. You're not talking about Brussels sprouts. I'm not talking about Brussels sprouts. I'm not talking, and I'm talking about one-time harvest, fast growing brassicas, bok choy, um, kohlrabi, stuff like that. I'm not talking about collards or kale because I'll pick them over and over and over again. So we're talking about a fast growing brassica here, one-time harvest, lettuce, beets, brassica. So in my garden, I my fall and winter plots, wherever I'm growing those crops. I don't do a whole plot of lettuce because I don't need that much lettuce. I don't do a whole plot of beets. What I will do is I'll take three rows. One row, I'll plant lettuce. One row, I'll plant beets. One row, I'll plant a short-term brassica. Three rows, side by side right there. Usually three double rows. And the good thing is all these pretty much come off right around the same time after being transplanted. Once I harvest all this lettuce, or these beets or this brassica, the next thing that goes in that same spot there, so we'll just pull up the drip tape, cultivate, put it right back down. So where I had lettuce, I'll then plant beets. Where I had beets, I'll then plant my short-term brassica. Where I have my brassica, I'll plant my lettuce. When these are done, we'll clean up that area again, and then there's a, there's a system here. Rotate I, I around. I can tell there's a system going on. So it's a, a three crop system there, and it doesn't take much room in the garden, only three rows. 
but you can use this system and man really pump out some food through the fall and winter months and you're practicing good crop rotation you're being good stewards of your soil and your you know disease resistance and stuff like that so now if that doesn't work for you and there's a skip in there somewhere you can always work in the cover crop into that that's correct that's correct mm. That's good stuff. I right? just had to, had to kind of mm. try to modify my program. Real? Well, I mean, just saying, what if somebody don't like beets? They could still use your program and work that right. cover crop. And you could work radishes in here as well. Yeah. Uh, carrots wouldn't work because they take too long. But, but when you're thinking about programs like this or rotations, think about things that require the same amount of time to grow out. So that's my little program, and uh, more than welcome to copy it. It works pretty good. Now let's get into um, this time of year. So for us, we got onions picked or pulled. We got taters about to be dug. I noticed on the row by row group, everybody's digging taters. Digging taters. Um, we got squash they're making. And what people, you know, what do, what do we want to plant after we pull them onions or dig them taters? Right. And we also don't want just one crop of squash because once those squash start making, you know, another month or so, those plants will be toast. A good thing to do on squash is about every two to three weeks plant your row. I, I tell people with squash, once your squash plants start making good, get some more in the dirt. Get some more in the dirt. And I planted three more rows this past weekend. So I know it's hard. Like a lot of times people get overwhelmed because they say, man, I'm having to pick these squash Ooh. every other day. Last thing I want to do is plant some more dad blame squash. But that's what you need sure to do. For sure as the world, when them squash quit, you'll be wishing you had some squash. Yep. Well, my potatoes and onions is coming off my area, and i tell you what I'm going to do. For that area there, I'm going to plant me some more okra because I got okra up about this big for you to start producing. So I'm going to plant me another row of okra. I'm going to plant me another row of cucumbers because my cucumbers are producing right now, but I really love cucumbers, as most people know. Plant me another row of cucumbers. I'm going to plant me a few more squash. Then I'm moving into flower power. Flower power. Flower power, full stream. I got 500 sunflowers in the gar in greenhouse right now coming up. I got 500 zinnia plants coming up, and I'm probably going to plant some more today. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm fever. talking about full force flower power. Then got the fever. Can I share this now? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Look what I got out of the garden right there today. That's pretty. So that that's some pro cut sunflowers. Pro cut sunflowers. They pollen us. So we shake this, it ain't gonna make a mess. First two that I've harvested this year. I you know I'd wish it had been in for Mother's Day, but I didn't quite make it. So that's lemon. Lemon. And that's orange. Orange. Yep. Um. And those are pretty. Zinnias are just starting to bloom a little bit. But well, these uh, are single stems. So single each stems. plant just makes one of these with the stems on them nice and sturdy. And they are about chin high. Chin high. About chin high. And uh, those are pretty and those will keep. If you harvest them, uh, the, the cut flower folks, Miss Lisa always said, harvest them right before they open up if you want to put them on a table or take them to church or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they'll open up once you put them in some mm -hmm. water. So I'm fixing getting sunflower business big time. Sunflowers and zinnias are great rotation for the middle of the summertime. That's right. They great are. One. They are. So when it gets hot and everything else is going down, it's hard to keep alive. That's the time to move to flower power. So if you got squash making, go ahead and plant you some more. Uh, where you pull up your onions or taters, not a bad idea. Maybe plant you some more cucumbers there or plant you some more okra there. As far as succession planting okra, once mine gets about waist high, it's getting close to knee high now. Once my okra gets about waist high, I'll go ahead and plant some more okra as well. Because what I don't like to, when it gets seven foot tall, I don't like Stand on my and it's not toes. as productive either. Right. So um, we'll plant some more okra, and we'll plant another round of okra. We'll plant three rounds of okra usually. Squash, we can get two or three of those in. Well, let's just say that your potatoes are coming off a of spot, and you're a big tater fan. What's well, something good to plant right back there? Well, why not go back with sweet potatoes? So, yeah. So the one I'm not going to do it this year because i got other plans for my some soil building where my taters were, but... 
for the last three or four years, right after I dig my Irish potatoes, I come right there behind with sweet potatoes. Why is that? Because we can do that. They're and not they're in not the in the same family. What family are they in? Which one? The sweet potatoes? Either one. Sweet potatoes in the morning glory family. What family is the Irish potatoes in? The uh, Solanaceae. Which is the nightshade family. Mm-hmm. So they, you can plant them back to back. Right. And then you can have a rotation there. So you can, uh, you, that's a good thing to do because sweet, you can't plant sweet potatoes till it gets real hot and it's, it's about to get real it's hot. About to get real hot. Uh, the ones I'm gonna plant this year is the Georgia Jets. Never grown them before, but my buddies up there still told me I had to grow Georgia Jets and that's the ones I'm gonna grow this year. I worked on my plot a little bit last night where I had my onions. I still gotta pull my elephant garlic, but- uh, Me too. Where my onions are, I got that spot almost ready. And next week, I'm going to call up there and I either talk to Larry or I'm going to talk to um, Ken. Ken, one of them, and I'm going to get some sweet potato plants ordered. And uh, I think I might I might go half Covington, half Georgia Jets because I want to compare the two. The Covington's always doing they good. They did good. We made a heck of a crop last year, but I'm planting Georgia Jets because that's what Larry told me to do. <laughs> so just only Georgia Jets. Only Georgia Jets. <clears throat> I like to have a little bit of side by side A, A and B test in there. Um, so, get it, I think it's sweetpotatoplant.com. If you need sweet potato plants, <coughs> that's the place to get them. They got several different varieties. Um, and just good old boys. Good folks, good folks up there in Gleason, Tennessee. That's where we get our plants from. A lot of people ask us on the phone, are we, <coughs> are we ever going to carry sweet potato slips? And it just, it wouldn't work out with the, um, that, that I can tell. We, they do a real good job with that. We'll let them take care of that. Yeah. So, All right. Um, you were talking about the flowers. So you got the pro cuts going. Now I've got some of the giant ones growing. Man, them things grow fast. You know, this is something that I realized this year. Sunflowers make an excellent cover crop. They grow quick and they got a big canopy on them. And if you plant them close enough, they will basically shade out all the weeds. Mm-hmm. And so although, I mean, you can look at it from three, and I'm probably going to do a video on this next week. Uh-oh. They have three different things to offer. You know, they shade out your other plants because they grow real quick. The purity, mm-hmm. and in case you're getting a tight with a wife or whoever, and mm-hmm. you need to impress somebody, you can always go out and get some sunflowers. Plus pollinators, bees, mm-hmm. pollinators love them. So three points there I made real quick why you should be planting some sunflowers. That's right. And the one thing we did we mentioned a little bit, and we'll probably need to do a whole show on warm weather cover crops because that time's coming up. Uh, but if you need something, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't really want to be gardening out in the heat of summer and you just like to do a spring garden and just like to do a fall garden then after your spring garden's done put you a warm weather cover crop on there and just a teaser there may be a little something coming out this friday on that oh watch out watch mm-hmm. out with gardening with greg oh watch out so may have you, some insight you got your uh millet you got your sorghum sedan we got some of that growing at the farm i'm consulting with and it's so pretty <coughs> but wheat you got your sun hemp. I think I'm going to do some sun hemp. Brown top millet. Uh, millet. Sun hemp is the one that's actually a nitrogen fixer. So there's not any. It's only warm weather cover crop that's a nitrogen fixer. Right. So I, I think I'm going to try a little bit of that. I've uh, grown it before it grows real quick too. Well, you've got your potatoes. We've th- <coughs> we're thinking about growing some peanuts. Peanuts. Going to plant a row or two of peanuts and try those out. So. Lots of different options out there about what you can you can grow and you can replace some of this early stuff with. Yep. Um, so I mean, really, you can grow all the way through. You can, well, where we at, we can grow year round. Right. So keep, if not, heck, you up there in a, in a colder climate where we are, still take advantage of a lot of opportunities that you're probably missing out on. Yeah. So don't don't let your garden grow up this late spring. Plant something else that's going to produce in there or get you a cover crop in there to really take care of your soil. All right, so good discussion there. If you have any more questions about that, as always, put those in the comments and we'll be glad to get to them on next week's show. We've got a couple questions this week from last week's show. And if we answer your question on the show, send us an email to cussserve at hosstools.com and we'll be glad to send you a nice little prize. So, Travis Maddenly. 
Mattingly, yeah. Mattingly, I did he okay. On, Don, you reckon? I don't think so. Anyhow, I got, I did pretty good on that. Yeah. He says I have an injector, but for the I have the injector, but for the two gallon injector, what would you recommend with the micronutrient fertilizer? Okay. So I, I'm not sure if he's asking how much of this to put in there. Or what he, or what to add in with He's it. He's asking, I think, what to add in with it. Okay. Well, I'll address both. Okay. So the rate on the micro boost here, this is good stuff, is a quarter cup per thousand square feet. So whatever area you intend on covering with your injector, and you could, with that injector, you could do a thousand square feet, or you could do ten thousand square feet, whatever you're going to cover. With mine, I usually am fertilizing four to five thousand square feet at a time. So a quarter cup. Per thousand square feet, I'll put two, two and a half cups in there in the injector. Uh, you can mix this with anything. You could mix it with the fish emulsion. You could mix it with the 20, 20, 20. You could even mix it with the Chilean nitrate. Or you could run it by itself in there. Uh, to answer his question the way I thought it was posed, the Chilean nitrate, the 20, 20, 20, or the fish emulsion. Yeah. Boom. Any of any those. Any of those. You know, we talked about it a week or two ago on the show about how important the nitrate nitrates are on tomatoes. So if I was injecting them on tomatoes, I would definitely use the Chilean nitrate in there a time or two, along with my 20, 20, 20, or my fish fertilizer. Yeah, and, you, and just because you're using this doesn't mean you have to back off any of your other fertilizer. Keep your rates of your other stuff. So whatever you would normally use in 20, 20, 20, put that in there, and then a quarter cup per thousand square feet of this and uh, you'll be pleased with the results. All right, and our last question here is from Terry Scoft. And uh, Terry said, how old are your plants or how far along are they? Uh, he's talking about our pest control program. When you start this treatment for tomatoes. When I transplant them. Now I normally don't spray my plants in the greenhouse with anything. And the reason is I don't have to. I don't have any insect pressure there in the springtime and I don't have any disease pressure. Right. We do such a good job managing that with the way we water and everything. So I don't have any problems. I can't remember the last time I sprayed anything in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. As soon as it goes into the ground, you're putting it in contact with soil that you may have some blight problems with, rhizotonia, pythium, any kind of soil-borne insects and all that. That's when the program starts is when that plant goes into the soil. Because that's when you want to control most of those diseases. A lot of those insects is early on as preventative. So to, you always like to summarize my points. To summarize what you said as early as possible. When you transplant it. Right. See, I finished it. Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. Good stuff there. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. As always, hit that share button. Hit that subscribe button if that's something you're into. Always glad to have new viewers every week, so don't keep us a secret. And uh, we're going to snack on some more green beans and get on out of here. Have a good one. Take care. Mm -hmm.